So we've seen identification of the average treatment effect under linearity assumptions, and we'll now look at identification of the ATE on, in more general settings, relaxing the linearity assumption. In the first class of methods, they let us model the structural equation for y as some very flexible function of treatment and observed confounders, plus some additive unobserved noise. So the really important assumption here is that the noise is additive. We don't have a function f where the arguments are t, w, and u, rather u only enters into the structural equation for y additively. And there's a bunch of different papers where they use different kinds of f's here. One is where you use deep neural networks. You can check out these references. Other common approaches are to use kernel methods for f. So the general idea is that once you add this additive noise assumption, and once you've chosen your model class f, which could be what people consider non-parametric, then you get identification of the regular average treatment effect, not the local average treatment effect. Because these methods make this additive noise assumption, they're really semi-parametric. So even if this f part is non-parametric, they're adding this parametric assumption, the additive noise one, which makes it the whole thing semi-parametric. Another option is to give up on point estimation of the average treatment effect using instruments, and instead try to do set identification. In other words, get a upper and lower bound for the average treatment effect. One of the main resources to check out for that is section 8.2 of Pearl's causality book, and giving up on point identification and focusing more on set identification can allow us to relax, for example, the additive noise assumption that we saw on the previous slide. So here we have the outcome for y, the structural equation for y, is f of t, where f is whatever, plus some additive noise, that's what we saw on the previous slide, minus the uh, observed covariates w for simplicity. Then, if you're not worried about point identification, what you can do is move the u that entered additively before inside of the function f, so that you're relaxing that additive noise assumption. Go ahead and check out this paper and references in it for how to do set identification, how to get bounds on the average treatment effect using these more flexible instrumental variable methods. And that concludes the instrumental variables lecture. Go ahead and hit a thumbs up down below if you like this lecture, and make sure to hit subscribe in the bell icon if you want to get notifications for future videos. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.